So I'd like to share a story with you of one of our We Think Code students. His name is Sia, and he grew up in a township in the Eastern Cape. And as 90% of young people in this country, he wanted to study, but he couldn't afford to. So he just went to Rhodes anyway, and he sat into some of these classes. He'd go to math, physics, and computer science. And one day, um, his computer science teacher said to him, started talking to him and said, you are every day in this class, but I know that you're not enrolled. And Sia started loving coding because he used it to actually make music. And learning about the story, the, the lecturer actually read about We Think Code, this new free university in Joburg, and convinced Sia to, to just apply. Now, there's 30,000 applications with only a 2% pass rate. You write these tests online, play these two games, and he passed. The next step of the application process is then to come to our campus and to participate in a four-week boot camp. Now, this is intense, every single day, solving problems, and you're not guaranteed to get in. You have to, only the top 40% of these boot camps make it into We Think Hood. We've got amazing, diverse people in this boot camp um, from all over the country. We have some students here today from Cape Town. And you have to work together. Students have to work together. We've got no teachers, no classes, so you learn from each other. Towards the end of the boot camp, one of our other students, who's 33 years old, he's an accountant and an iron man, and he, he came to me and he said, you know, there's this one guy in class. He's just, he's amazing. I've learned so much from him, and he said to me, you know, this Sia guy, he's going to change the world. Now, it's stories like that that really inspire me, and that show me just the incredible potential we have in our young people in this country. I'm going to show you the slide, and the guys backstage told me, you know, in Cape Town, people don't care about these things, but in Joburg, all we do is we talk about these problems. But yes, I know we've got challenges in this country. We've got 63% unemployment. That's young people under the age of 25. We've got 500,000 vacancies. So that's 500,000 jobs that could be filled if the skills existed. We've got education rated second worst in the world in maths and science, which is two places up from, from last year. Our rand is extremely undervalued. We've got rising crime. And let's not even talk about the political environment. But what I believe is that it's exactly these challenges that drives our people here to be innovative. I really believe that it's these challenges that can drive us to solve the world's most pressing problems. So in the United States, they have these high-tech CEO awards every year. Now, it's the likes of Larry Page from Google that compete for these awards, but here's the interesting thing. The first five years, four out of the five winners of this award was originally from South Africa. Now, all these companies up on the screen, not only do they have in common that they were founded by South Africans, but these companies are solving real problems. I mean, SpaceX is trying to take us to Mars in case we destroy this planet. Clickatel is the world's largest online SMS service. So these challenges, I believe, help us to solve these problems. So if you look at what Elon Musk said, he said, growing up in South Africa, he couldn't buy these rocket kits that kids could learn from in the United States. He was forced to build and innovate his own, and we all know where he is today. Sia grew up in a township in Umtata, and he started experimenting with this rocket fuel in his mom's kitchen. Today, he's pioneering globally um, new and more affordable ways to develop rocket fuel. You know, I don't think we're going to create the next Snapscan, Angry Birds, and Candy Crush in South Africa. We're going to look towards solving problems for a world of possibility. We're going to look at solving problems in education, in healthcare, and communication, in transport. We understand the challenges here. We understand the needs. We understand these problems. We don't need another candy crush. We need real groundbreaking innovation. Now, the problem is the skills. And as Rob said, we all know that we have a massive skill shortage in this country. There's currently 200,000 vacancies in the software engineering industry alone. That's only in South Africa. And what do we do? We outsource all our dev work to India, Bangladesh, Poland. But imagine the impact of one skilled coder. We're going to see entrepreneurs starting their own businesses, starting to export skills that will drive economic growth. We're going to see skilled employees working in companies 
so that companies can actually grow as efficiently and effectively as they're supposed to. We're going to see role models out there inspiring people that they can actually do this, showing people out there what is coding, what is this world of technology. You know, coding is not some guy sitting in a basement fixing your printer. That's not what it's about. Coding is the language that you can use to design the future. Now, imagine what they did in India. They started investing in these skills. And now all over the world, people are setting up their dev shops in India. But imagine we can do that in South Africa. Imagine we can source and develop 100,000 coders in Africa. And imagine that South Africa and Africa becomes the place that you can go to if you're looking for digital problem solvers. The way that I believe we can do this is through a different approach to education. So what we're doing at We Think Code is we're saying, OK, let's look at things a little bit differently. Let's democratize education. Let's make it open to anyone. So perhaps you were born with the aptitude to code, but in a country like South Africa, not the opportunity. Let's look at it also differently, make it peer-to-peer -peer learning. Focus on learning how to solve problems instead of just memorizing facts. Teaching young people to question and to think differently about things. And also to get corporates on board. So in order to make it completely free and accessible to anyone, we need some support. But not only do we need the corporates to partner with us from a financial point of view, we need to make sure that whatever our students learn is actually relevant to the industry. And we need to work together to make sure that corporates also invest in, in these skills development. So I want to say that corporates out there need to get on board, need to say, we want to invest in the young people in our country. If we want to think differently, if we want to solve all these problems, we have the skills here. These problems are not going to be solved from Silicon Valley. We need to understand them. We need to create them here. But in order to do that, we need to develop these skills. I want to say to the entrepreneurs also to stay in South Africa. If you start your business here, you know, if it works in South Africa, it's probably going to work anywhere in the world. And then I want to say, I want to challenge all of you today to get on board, to say, let's get on board with investing in these skills. Let's get on board with the digital revolution. Let us step up. What our corporates do is they provide internship opportunities for our students. So not only do they just say, we're going to give financial assistance, they say that we're going to spend time. We're going to take four months at a time and invest in the skills development of these students. And at the end of the two years, we have software developers that I believe can really change this industry and this country. And then I want to challenge all of you to get out there and support this. And I also want to say to the entrepreneurs and the corporates out there, invest locally and invest in this incredible young potential that we have here and also in the infrastructure. And let's not just talk about all of this. Let's start to act. Thank you.